Welcome. You are watching Line Screw One. Well, hello, tubers, wherever you are in this crazy YouTube universe. I first have to apologize to the ambient noise. There's a bit of construction work going on around me, and there's a summer play school <laughs> outing here at the park. So, what can you do? Those little backbiters, they, they love to run around, scream, and yell, and whatever. I, I guess I did the same thing when I was four years old. Whatever the case. Um, today, we're going to talk about importing your dog to another country when you retire, or I guess that would be exporting your dog to a new country when you retire. The logistics of that is uh, mind-blowing, and I can honestly say I have learned a lot. Now, this video is gonna be general information because I can't speak to everything and everyone and every place and every country. I mean, there's 180 countries, there's probably 180 breeds of dogs. I, I'm just guessing, I, I don't know. Many breeds, let's just say. Um, there's many regional issues, there are issues with exporting dogs, importing dogs, uh, there's all sorts of uh, permits at times that you have to get. So what we're going to do is touch on this <laughs> in terms of the logistics for me and I'm going to talk about some generalities globally that you're going to encounter. First of all, you're going to have to research and, and whatever you do, don't do this. This is the biggest problem with the, the internet. Some bozo will type something into their Google search and come up with an answer and it's old information, outdated information. The permit requirements have changed. <laughs> you know, the rules and regulations have changed. So what I recommend you do before you listen to some bozo on the internet uh, you need to find the most current information because even this video you might watch this video two three four five years from now so what you always need to do is go to the government of whatever country you are importing your dog to get the most current information so whatever country that is pick the country they all have official government websites if you uh, have any degree of savviness, you'll know how to discern the difference between an official government uh, site and a non-official one. So always look at the official site for current information. And secondly, your shipper, usually your airline, always consult with them and their websites and even phone them if you have to. Because the last thing you wanna be doing is you're about to board a flight, stick your dog on the flight, to uh, you know, points unknown on the other side of the world, and you have not got your ducks in a row, because <laughs> guess what, your dog ain't coming. And generally means uh, if your dog ain't coming, you ain't coming, because the way I'm gonna do it is my dog will be in the pressurized heated cargo hold of my plane. Uh, I'm, it's probably a little bit more expensive the way I'm gonna do it, but at the very least I know wherever that plane's going, even if it's diverted because of weather or God knows what, the dog is in the cargo hold with me. So if we gotta do an emergency landing in Shanghai, no problem, Sammy the Pooper's with me. Plane's going down, I guess Sammy the Pooper's coming down with me too. So whatever the case, you, you get it. Now the disadvantage of doing that is, of course, you can't shop around on the pricing. Because I guarantee if you do shop around and just do uh, a freight shipment of live cargo, which is done all the time, millions of dogs are flown around the world every year. It's a pretty common thing. And even uh, a live cargo in terms of food, it does happen. So if you're trying to save money, I guess you could shop around and just get a shipper that'll quote you the lowest price possible to your destination. And I assume you would fly out earlier to pick up the dog. Okay. That is an option. I don't like that option. I'll rather pay the more expensive option where the dog is in the belly of the aircraft with me so that there's no problems. I really don't want any uh, Shanghai surprises where I'm uh, looking for my dog in some weird third world country because it got diverted and then God, God knows somebody opened the cage, the dog ran out. Another thing that I've actually recently learned is there is an entire list of dogs that many, now listen to me, many airlines will not ship. I didn't say all, I said many. And they're generally the uh, 
you know the short-nosed breeds that have breathing problems now I don't personally believe that those dogs are inherently more dangerous to stick in a pressurized heated cargo hold I just imagine that there's been too many cases of those dogs dying perhaps even naturally in the cargo hold especially when they get a little panicky and you know when you panic your breathing is affected just like human beings I've seen humans have panic attacks and of course it does affect their breathing so all the short-nosed breeds there are a ton of airlines that won't touch them no thank you no how no matter what you want to give them for money it won't happen so research that luckily my dog is an American pit bull which forms its own problems with other countries. There are many countries or regions within countries that actually ban the import of pit bull dogs or dogs who look like pit bulls because there's really no way of uh, genetically testing a pit bull because it's just a breed. It's like the genetic difference between me, a Canadian, and the genetic difference of an American. <laughs> there is no difference, it's, they're dogs. They're all dogs. So they're kind of judged on their visual uh, characteristics. That being said, long list of countries that will not allow you to import your pit bull or pit bull lookalike or whatever you want to call it. Now I suspect Sammy the Pooper, who's an American uh, rescue, she's an American dog from the USA, from Washington State. I think she's got a little bit of lab in her, but she's predominantly pit bull and her temperament is predominantly pit bull. So I guarantee you if I was to present my dog for entry into any country that is uh, banned for that breed, they would deny the dog. So don't do that to yourself. Don't show up to a country where you know the dog is going to be banned and you will not clear customs and immigration with the dog shipment. You're just setting yourself up for a whole lot of hassle and expense because the dog will be put into quarantine and shipped back to the country of origin and I assume you're gonna to have to fly back uh, and deal with that unless I guess you can send the dog somewhere else and just uh, rid yourself of the dog if you are so inclined a lot of dog owners would not do that of course so that is uh, just the icing on the cake of dogs that can't travel certain dogs that won't be allowed to be shipped and then we get to the permitting and vaccination requirements with the dogs vaccines required in a lot of places so the entire cost and hassle of you shipping your dog overseas to retire is going to amount to this in many cases you're going to need a import permit from the government you are going to not all countries require it but many do and part of that permit requirement is you're going to take your dog to a licensed veterinarian here in the United States or in Canada that's properly licensed and they're going to get all their vaccines including rabies, bordetella, uh, distemper sometimes it's up to five or six vaccinations and you're going to pay for that you are also going to pay for the veterinarian certificate that says the dog is healthy enough to get the permit for importation to the country that you're actually going. Keep in mind that many of these permits do have time restrictions, typically something like 30 days, so you wanna make sure that you see your veterinarian within a window that your flight will be leaving. So when you add it up, the cost for the veterinarian consultation, the certificate, oh, don't forget microchipping. <laughs> your dog must be microchipped in most countries for arrival. And uh, you might say, well, my dog has a microchip, but it has to be a certain type of microchip that is has a certain compliance, uh, I, whatever. I, I don't know a lot about microchipping, but my dog is microchipped. So dog must be microchipped. You're paying for that. You're paying for up to five or six vaccinations. You're paying for a permit. You're paying for a veterinarian certificate. And you're going to get a carrier, you know, unless your dog is tiny, tiny, and they allow it in the cabin you are getting a shipping carrier and that has to be an aviation approved carrier there's all sorts of conditions for that you can research it i'm not going to get into it pretty boring topic but don't show up at the cardboard box or the carrier that you've always had all your life and you think that that is uh, aviation uh, acceptable it may not be do your research just go on there find uh, you know if you're flying on 
Air Canada, they'll tell you. If you're flying on, you know, Fiji Airlines, they'll tell you. Just, just do your research for whatever airline you're flying on. They will tell you the actual requirements. Then, we get to the shipping part. That's the most expensive part. So, as in my case, Sammy the Pooper is going to be on the same flight as me. Now, here is part of the logistics. I actually have two flights to go to get where I'm going. Not possible without torturing the hell out of the dog because I have to drop off Sammy the Pooper at the Swiss Port cargo handling area on Miller Road in Vancouver at the airport six hours plus before the uh, shutoff for cargo movement embargo occurs, meaning that they have a cutoff time for cargo and a cutoff time for live cargo because the planes, you know, manifest and the whole weighting of all the, the stuff that's going on board has to be weighed, processed, and moved across the tarmac from the cargo area into the aircraft. So it's six hours plus. So you're gonna have to be budgeting at least seven hours prior to departure to drop off your dog in many cases, especially in my case. So add the time the dog is gonna be in flight, which is going to be, in my case, uh, minimum 14 hours, 14 to 15 hours on the first leg of the flight. 14 plus seven, 21, maybe 22 hours, add another hour or two for getting the dog off the plane into uh, the terminal where I can claim the dog. That's a hell of a grind for a dog. Of course, it's gonna do its business inside the shipping container or the uh, kennel container, I guess you should call it. So be prepared for that. You're gonna have to have uh, water bottles that are approved that are sticking in there. So essentially the dog's not gonna eat and just drink water and have some padding below to just to sleep, relax, and uh, you know, sleep it off. I think most of my flight will be at night. My flight will be mostly night, so I, I guess the heated, pressurized uh, live cargo area will just have a few lights in the cargo hold. It'll be fairly, you know, quiet and uh, semi-dark, so. Sammy would just uh, sleep it off. Now, the logistics of arrival. You know, you gotta have copies of all these permits in case you lose it, copies of all the vaccinations in case you lose it, and make sure that uh, you, you got all your ducks in a row. And for me, because I have a second flight and the dog can't rot in that kennel for another, you know, six to 14 hours for the next leg of the flight, it's just not, possible it's not it's it's cruel I mean <laughs> who would want to be locked into a cage for you know that long so I'm going to have to pick up Sammy at the airport upon my arrival with her and uh, grab an uber or uh, you know one of those cargo van guys and go to a hotel that's pet friendly or straight to a kennel. There's a few kennels in the city that I will be arriving and uh, I can always scooch her in there and then I can go back to the hotel and I'll go back to visit her for a few days and then I have a choice to make. Uh, I can either keep her in the kennel in that city for four or six weeks and then I fly on and I buy myself a brand new scooter motorcycle, sign a lease on a new house or apartment and then come back and get her because the flight time between where I'm going to be and where Sammy's going to be is only like an hour and a half. So no big deal, no big deal. Easy transport. So either that or, you know, a couple days uh, in the layover at a pet friendly hotel and we continue the journey together. I don't know, I, the, the second part of the journey I haven't really figured out, but uh, that's gonna be an issue for many of you because there's a lot of places in the world you cannot fly directly, or if you can fly directly, the cost is so prohibitive that you actually take an indirect route. So uh, that's uh, what I gotta do. What you gotta do, you're gonna have to research it. Like I said, so many banned breeds. So many vaccinations, uh, certificates, import permits, the shipping cost. I guarantee you the cost for me to ship Sammy the Pooper, including all the fees and permits and buying the kennel and the freight costs, 
I will probably be paying at least 50% more than it costs to move my damn body. That's how expensive it is. So if you ain't got money and you ain't got the ability to bring your dog to these places with the proper permits, don't risk it, don't try it. They won't let your dog in. Don't fall into the trap where you think, but I'm an American, you better take my American dog. Well, it doesn't work that way. Every country makes their own rules and trust me, they're gonna mess with you if you are not prepared with the proper documentation and permits. But it's your life, you do what you want. Hey, far be it from me to stop people from making expensive and stupid mistakes. So. But, you know, we all love our dogs. I've never had kids. Don't plan on having any kids. Too late in my life to have kids. So Sammy the Pooper is pretty much the only dog that has been exclusively mine, so I think she deserves a good retirement in the tropics. So uh, I'm sure she's going to have fun chasing geckos and weird uh, <laughs> insects that we've never seen before. And she can uh, spend her retirement uh, chilling out like I'm going to be doing. Somewhere by a pool with a cool drink. I think she deserves it. So that's it about my rant about exporting or importing, if you will, a dog to a new country that you are retiring. Definitely possible in many cases, but definitely gonna be a bit of a hassle and a bit of an expense. But hey, what's money for? It's for spending. If you can't spend money on things you love, what good is it for? In the meantime, folks, stay safe. Put your comments down below. And I'll talk to you soon. Over and over.